Shut up! <laughs> Unleash the beast. Oh, what a shot! Redair Chisora! Wow! David Price has stepped in to face Derek Chisora at the O2 Arena. I'm ready to go to war. Derek, we're here on a farm, a petting farm, I believe. Yeah. Why are we here? It belongs to a guy I uh, know very well, and um, it's a petting farm, and uh, it's for good, it's for good for kids, it's for like children's farm, which is nice. How did you discover it? Because it's, it's a, it's a very different it's, scene that the, the we kind of normally associate with you. It's a, it's a hidden gem. It's only in North London, and we're right here in North London, 20 minutes away from town, so it's nice. Would you say it's a bit like a, a sanctuary to you? The calm away from the, yes. the, the hectic yeah. world? Yes, of yes, yes, it is. In what way? Because when you come through the gates, everything is just disappear. Everything just disappear, nothing bothering you, everything just chilled. It, it's a really lovely place to be. It, it makes a change, actually, to being in, in a yeah. normal boxing gym. Yeah. It's rather nice. We've seen, over the years, many different sides to yourself. Who is the real Derek Chisora? Don't know. No idea. I'm just trying to figure it out myself. How did you get into boxing? It was a long story, but <laughs> got, got arrested, did probation for three years, and then uh, my probation officer signed me up with John Oliver and Jim Oliver, God rest his soul. Spencer Oliver's dad, <clears throat> start boxing. I was not really good at it. I was a bit fat and chubby, so uh, well, I realised I could fight. And I just carried on. What was life like before boxing, though? Normal for every kid, you know, because there's a point. There's a point in your life uh, when you're like in your 16, 18. You know, you're trying to find yourself, what path you want to take. And I, I don't, I don't, I don't doubt my uh, my childhood growing up. Like before I got into boxing, I loved it. You know, I hanged out with guys from Birmingham, Manchester. You know, South London, East London. I loved it. it made me so many friends. You know, being on the roads, on on the roads, on the streets. You know, getting up to no good. You know, I did that, and then one day I just realized what I wanted to be. I was not driving them days, so I I realized at one point I connected it. I started shadow boxing outside where I was waiting for a bus stop and I thought I was a nutter. You know, I'm just shadow boxing. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm hooked on boxing. So that was it. I enjoyed it from then. So what did you do? You went down to a gym? Went down to a gym with John Oliver and my probation officer signed up, did a couple of lessons, didn't really feel it, you know, I was not really up for it, you know, because walked in the gym in Barney. There's not only about two black kids in there and the rest were white kids and then they were like moving around, skipping, you know, double skipping. I'm like, God damn, they're good. On Saturdays, you run in the morning, the whole gym. So if you make, if your parents drove, they'll bring you. If they didn't drive, you have to go to the gym, wait for the van to, for the, for the coach to come and start the van up and you go in the van. So I was the first one there. And it was, a, it's like a four mile, for a 4K run, but so can you imagine this as a kid, you're running 4K and you're fat. How old are you at this point? I, I'm, I'm, I think I was about, I was 17, yeah. Jumped on a thing, went running. Running all these slight guys, came out, came out third. I'm so proud of myself. You've got an engine on you. <laughs> yeah, it took me four days to recover though. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, wow. So that was a moment for you that you felt like you fitted in? Yeah, and that was a moment for me. Your personality, you are, shall we say, quite outspoken. Some may say brash. Do you, do you think that's fair? Do, do you enjoy that side? I haven't got a few to me. I just say how it is. Has that always been the case? People should know the truth. Why should you hide the truth from everybody? Do you like shocking people? Do you like being outspoken? Yeah. I like to just say how it is. I say this because 
there's been times where you, you've said things, you've done things that may have raised a few eyebrows. And for you know, recent, recent times, you, you were very outspoken at the uh, Taylor Progress press conference. And some people wonder whether this is something that Derek Chisora goes in and it's premeditated. You thought about doing or is it spontaneous? What is it with you? Mm, coming back when, you, when, when I spoke about what? Taylor? Yeah, I mean, you thought that you should be main event and you were very outspoken about that. You didn't want to be the uh, chief yeah, support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know that for a fact. It's just like... I'm, yeah, I say how I want to, I say how I see it. You know, if I knew if if, if this kid, if this guy was selling 50,000, 20,000, I don't mind just jumping back on that. But if I'm doing all the work and they're jumping on it, I'm like, no way. I'm not going to do that. You know? So on that day, had you thought about going in and saying something or was that just on the spot? <clears throat> no, I was in, I was in, I was in LA when uh, when the poster came out. My mother told me I was like, "Well, I was like, oh, don't worry, I'll deal with it when I get back." And then I thought about how I'm going to deal with it. Is it phoning Eddie or going phoning David and just lay out on the card straight? I was like, "You know what? No, it's better if I just embarrass everybody in front of everybody so everybody understands where we are." Who's the main event of this fight? It was the main event? Yeah. It's the, the gentleman sitting next to you. Oh, it, mate, that's not going to work for me. <laughs> You're trying to bombard me like you want me to sell it out to my London crowd, my London fans, and then you want to put these little guys, nobody knows about them, on my show, and then try and make, mug me off. For me, if you do wrong by me, especially when uh, there's cameras around, I will sit quietly until I see cameras and then I embarrass you. Because... Uh, you know, if they had told me, oh, you'd be Chief Safuara, I'd say, you know what, go ahead, do your own show, I'm, I'm not in it. If it's fair, I'm, I'll be cool. But if it's not fair, I'm, I'm going to speak up my mind. Let's get electrified. 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 We just go through some of the things throughout your career that, that's happened. You uh, kissed an opponent at a weigh-in. Smushed him. Smushed, had a little smooch. Yeah, have a little smush. Is that normal? Is that is that what you do? I was practicing for my acting career. <laughs> All right, so that, you've done that. Yeah. You bid an opponent in a fight. I was bored. That I was totally bored. You had a brawl with David Hay. Yes. In Munich. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a very feisty brawl. It was because I did lose a massive fight, you know, and I was like, where's my next paycheck going to come from? And the flipping of the table in the... Yeah, uh, that was a set up. That, that was a definite set up. From who? From Eddie. Eddie set me up on that one. So do you ever look back on some of these things that, that have happened and think maybe you, you went a bit too far? No. Why? No regrets. Never. Do you enjoy shocking people? Do you enjoy being controversial? I do what makes me happy. That's my motto, that's how I live by. Make, do what makes me happy. Do what makes Derek Chisora happy. Do you ever feel like you are Derek Chisora, the performer, rather than the fighter? Because people expect that shock value yeah. from you, don't they? They do. And sometimes, uh, sometimes I like to do both, perform and fight. You think the two can go hand in hand? Yeah. You can be able to performance and then be able to fight. Yeah, I like to do both. You're quite a private man, aren't you? What do your family say? They know me very well and they know like, I do what makes me happy, so they're cool with it. How are you different away from boxing? I mean, we're seeing you now in, in this setting here at a, at a petting farm. Couldn't get much more different, could you? This, I'm, I'm, I'm easy going. I'm easy going. I'm just, I'm life, life. I love life and I love to do what makes me happy. So what's home, home Derek Chisora like? Sit down, watch a bit of Sky Sports, football, NFL, you know. I don't really watch boxing that much, to be honest. And then, uh, and just enjoy, enjoy their family life. 
I'm an easy person to train, yes. But I like to argue while I'm training. I like to moan. <laughs> that doesn't always go down well. If David Hay is a fighter, he should fight me. I don't boo for you. lost three fights in a row. Yeah, let's fight. Then. Excuse me. me. Let's fight. How do you know? Three times in a row. David, you want to tell me that in my face? You want to tell me my face? You lost the time. You want to tell me my face? Alright, tell me my face then. What? I'm coming there and tell me my face. Your brawl with David Hay. You had that quite vicious brawl with him in Munich. You, you fought him and then Many people were surprised when you, you teamed up with him and are now working with him. What, what was the decision behind that? <clears throat> you know, uh, I'm a born again, so uh, a couple of things I've changed in my life. You know, I don't drink alcohol. I've been sober for one year, nine months now. Um, there's so many things I don't do anymore, which I used to do badly. Um, and. I saw David at the uh, fight in uh, O2 Arena. And then uh, kept on popping in my head. Manager David, manager David. And I was like, are you serious? Like, yeah, fine. And then uh, <clears throat> I called him up and then I spoke to him. Made him at Chino's. He was very surprised, didn't he? When I met him in Park Plaza, he was very surprised. like. What does he want, you know? And then I said, I, I want you to manage me. I see his face. In his mind, he's like, yes, you know? And then after, after he came to my house, because if I'm going to do this, I want to do this right. I want you to do everything I want to tell you. So I want you to leave your family now and then pack your bags and come with me now. How would you describe the relationship between the two of you? You know what? It's cool. You know, uh, David is a simple man. You know, he's just chilled. He's not demanding much. You know, you know one thing I realized about him is more like he cares a lot. You know, for his family and for those others around him, he cares a lot. You know, he never he's not a bad-minded person. Um, and uh, it's cool, man. He just tells me how it is, and sometimes like, we do argue. I was about to say, yeah, did you do. ever? Did you ever? Yeah, we do argue. I like, I, I, he don't like arguing, but I like arguing. We do argue. Oh, you have to do this session. I'm like, nah, do I have to? He goes, no, you have to. I'm like, Yo, you have to explain it to me. Why am I doing this session? How is he going to benefit me on this and this? Goes, and then he comes in, he, he'd be like in his room and he'd come downstairs and be like, come and goes, all right, bro, you have to do this, this workout today because of this and this and this and this. I'm like, all right, cool, fine. And I'm like, is that it? I'm like, yeah, cool, I'll do it. Because you're two strong personalities, aren't yes, you? Yes, we are. Which normally, when you put two strong personalities together, you normally get fireworks. Yeah, you get fireworks, but you have to understand is, I I went to him to ask for help, mm. so my my ego has to go on the side a little bit because I'm asking help from him. So sometimes I put my ego on the side. I it's not like oh nah this and this. I'm like you know what, I'm paying you so much money, so I will take your advice 100 percent. What do you think he's taught you? train before you sign for the contract because if the contract is not signed keep training train 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 that's what is that what used to go wrong for you to think in the past yeah in the past and i was not living a life and stuff like that a lack of consistency yeah and that's changed yes yeah, changed big time i enjoy it apart from david and, and the haymaker team around you who else who else is in your circle my mother. My mother. Very close to your mum? Yeah. If anything goes wrong, I call her straight away. Even when I got cut in my mouth, I called her first. So when, when you're being controversial, Derek Sora, what does your mum say? Mm, she just puts the TV on and goes, you made headlines again. I'm like, did I? Good or bad? Because it doesn't matter. Are you happy? I'm like, yeah. She goes, oh, okay, fine. I'll see you later. Bye. So who do you listen to? Nobody. Depends how you put it. Maybe my little girl, because <laughs> she's very bossy. What about, you say you don't listen to anyone, but you, you must listen to the people. You must listen to your trainers. If a trainer's Management team around if you. If a trainer's, listen, if they're giving me wrong advice, 
I will not listen to them. If it's wrong and if it's not good, I will not listen. I'll just like, okay, whatever. Do you think you are an easy person to train? I don't know. I never trained myself before. But in terms of personalities? You just say you won't listen to anyone. No, I, I'm an easy person to train, yes. But I like to argue while I'm training. I like to moan. <laughs> that doesn't always go down well. It goes down well because my whole team knows that. Let's talk about your trainers then because you were with Don Charles for a long time. He yeah, was yeah. always like a father figure to you. Yeah. Do you still speak to him? Is yeah. there still contact there? The sadness we don't speak, you know. Uh, you know, when you go through a lot with people, it's like going through a divorce. You know, suddenly your wife or your husband don't want to talk to you, you're taking the kids and stuff like that. You know, it's difficult, so time will heal. In what way is it tough for you, passing with Don? Well, it's, listen, uh, was it tough for me? No, it was not tough for me. It was easy for me. You know, I just wanted, I wanted more. So you left Don and you linked up with David Coldwell, yes. had a couple of fights with Dave. Yes. You've now parted ways with David Coldwell. Yeah. Why is that? Why have you made that decision? I told Dave to come and train me down here for four weeks. He said, no, he didn't want to. He's got everything up there. I was like, oh, then cool then. El Aviv, see you later. And it's all, but it's all good? It's all good, man, David. We speak. I, we, we're good terms. You know, if the new coach comes, he don't work out, he's gone too, and I go back to Dave. Does it concern you that there is a little lack of consistency with trainers? No, because I'm ready to go to war. It don't matter. It don't matter who's in the corner. As long as somebody who's in the corner is ready to just give me water and wipe my face, I'm ready to go to I'm not ready to go to war. I mean, you're 35 years old now. Do you feel like you I don't know. I'm 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 getting the impression that do you feel like you've learned all you need to learn? We we, we learn every day. You know, different people like to chuck a different punch in a different way. You know, different hooks in a different way. Uh, I learn every day. But it depends whoever comes in my corner is not going to change my style. In the past, you have blown a little hot and cold in the ring. Would you agree with that? It happens. But the why? same thing as getting married. You can blow on hot and cold in your marriage. It's never going to go 100%, 100%, you know. Next minute you're sleeping in the spare room. Next minute you're sleeping in the main room. It's just life. Why is that, do you think? Because we, we often talk about it. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you watch the shows, but in, in, in the punditry and, and when I'm talking to the guests, we often say, we don't know which Derek Chisora is going to turn up this evening. If Derek Chisora turns up, the one that we saw fight Spilka recently, or even when you were in the white fight recently, fireworks. But if we see the same Derek Chisora that turned up in Monaco against Caballero. Oh, don't remind me about that guy. But do you know what I mean? Oh, that guy was disgusting. That is one of the reasons why I split up with Don. Because? He didn't come to Monaco. That was a big turning point that for you? That was a big turning point. That I had already my half of my leg out of the door. I was looking for something else. But I didn't see the vision yet, so I was still looking. Were things not right that night for you? Things were not right, you know. Things were not right. They were not great, there were no fireworks. And the whole thing, the whole Monaco show, to be honest with you, it's a, gr it's a, it's a great name, Monaco, yeah, it's a nice, uh, you know, but really and truly, and to all the fighters out there, they say fight in Monaco, say no. <laughs> that place is a drainer, it drained me out. What gets us seeing the Derek Chisora like we've seen recently? The national anthem. Really? Yeah, oh, Derek Chisora. had some real ups and downs in your career, haven't you? Yeah, but it's life, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't moan about, or, you know, I don't cry over my losses, to be honest with you, never did. Have you ever thought about walking away? Nah. I'm even saying maybe after Monaco. I mean, you, yeah, I, you guys thought that. You know, and I was, was that like, ever the case? That was the case. After Monaco, I was like, I'm not going out like this. Never. 
no gang on like this. I can't even pronounce the guy who beat me and I'm gonna let him retire me. I'm like, never, I'm not going out like this. Cowboy never. Out. Yeah. I'm like, never. I like, I need to get to the promised land. The day I walk down a straight line and I keep dropping off, then I know it's time for me to stop. But as long as I can go in the gym and keep up with these young guys, sparring, cardio and everything, I'm still in the game. You're 35, I ask this because you're 35. Do you have an exit plan? Until God tells me to stop, I will stop. But for now, he keeps telling me, you know what, carry on, son. You look, you're doing good. And when it's time, I'll let you know. I'll let everybody know. Well, do you know what? We uh, look forward to seeing you on October the 26th. Best of luck and thank you for talking to us off limits. Thank you. Do you think this is something that you'd probably like to live on or come to when you retire? This is peaceful, man. You can't beat this. This is amazing. You know, I asked you the question at the yeah. start and I said, um, who is the real Derek Chisora? Yeah. I think this is the real Derek Chisora. Is that, is that right? You never know. <laughs> Bye. I've been a puppet, a pauper, a pirate, a poet, a pawn and a king. I've been up and down and over and out. And I know one thing. Each time I find myself flat on my face, I pick myself up and get back in the race. That's life. That's life. I can't deny it I thought of quitting, baby But my heart just ain't gonna buy it And if I didn't think it was worth one single try <laughs> I'd jump right on a big bird And then I'd fly 